What's up everybody? So we're out in the shop with another Shop Talk Tuesday and in this episode we are starting a new build series. So this one, if you're new to the channel, is all about the Bowie knife. Now if y'all have watched previous videos of mine, y'all know that I just got done doing a Bowie challenge competition with other YouTubers and my entry was actually the Karam Bowie. So this knife right here. The whole reason behind making this is I wanted to make something that was just way different from what everybody else was making and <laughs> I accomplished that. No one else made a knife like this so it worked out. Now in that particular challenge I ended up getting uh, tied for fourth. So myself and Green Beetle we tied for fourth and then you had Insic Ali and then Ali Knives those were your third and your second and then first was Dennis Tyrell uh, from Tyrell Knife Works. So, Absolutely awesome, Dennis. You did an amazing job, and I think you really earned that victory. So, boom. Thumbs up for that. Guys, y'all make sure y'all congratulate him. If y'all haven't already seen the fact that he had released his video saying, hey, here's who won, he did an amazing job. That was absolutely awesome Damascus that he did with that, like, snowflake Damascus. Just epic. Absolutely epic. But my particular knife that I did, like I said, was the Karam Bowie. Now, I wanted to go ahead and make a full-size buoy knife because so many of the guys in the competition did those larger buoys, and I thought, man, I really want to make one of those because they just look beefy and awesome. So I ended up designing one, which is this right here. It's going to be a 14-inch buoy with a guard, full tang, all of that, but I'm going to be utilizing the same textures that I did in this build. So they might not be in the same exact area. I might not do the bevels like this and the forging texture up here, but I'm gonna be showing y'all how we actually accomplish that on the different areas on this because I've got a bunch of different places that I can actually do cool things with the texturing on this knife. But I wanted to make a larger version of it and this blade profile is the same profile as the Crown Bowie, just larger. And I just, I think this is gonna be an absolute blast. But before we can really go any further in this, we need to get the piece of steel that we're gonna be utilizing for this build. And we're gonna use the same 5160 from the chopper build that we just finished for the Shop Talk Tuesday series that was, you know, last Tuesday. I absolutely loved that steel and it just had the most amazing edge retention so I want to make another knife out of it but in that build series I didn't forge the knife to profile I forged it flat but I didn't forge it to profile and we're gonna be doing that in this series so it's gonna be pretty cool but we need to go out cut the piece of uh, the steel off of the leaf springs and then bring it back in here so I'm gonna go cut that real quick I'll be right back So we've got our piece of steel right here. It is a beefy son of a gun right here. Now, I ended up cutting it to this length because I'm gonna do something to make my life a little bit easier. Now, originally whenever I was gonna do this, I was just gonna cut it into a rectangle, forge it all the way out to profile, and just absolutely destroy myself in the process. But I thought about it, and what I can do is do a couple of small things to make my life a little bit easier. I'm going to end up cutting a 45 into this right here and taking this piece off so that I kind of have a tip already designated. Now there's going to be a lot of forging to make this go into the way that I need it to go, but that's going to make my life a little bit easier. That's going to take probably 45 minutes to an hour out of the forging process, just doing that part. And then I'm going to take a rectangle out of this section right here where the handle is going to be. Now that doesn't mean that, okay, cool. Now the handle's done. No, we've still got to do a lot of forging to get the actual profile right on the handle because if you see here, 
there's a whole lot of profile right here. That is not rectangular at all. So we're going to have to do a lot of forging, but it's at least going to make it to where I don't have to actually forge this up an inch right here and do all of that. That's going to save me probably an hour worth of forging in itself. Plus, this piece that I cut out here, I'll be able to turn into a scrap knife later. So that's even more content for y'all at a different time. But we're going to do some of that cutting, and then we're going to take it, put it in the forge, and, you know, start forging this thing out. I'm really excited about this. I really think that this is going to turn out awesome. Now, we're going to do a voiceover so that y'all can kind of understand what I'm doing in the process of forging, so that as I'm doing the little steps that I do, it might make more sense, because I am not like a actual, like, bladesmith person. I'm not a person who was taught how to forge knives. I guess I am a bladesmith person, but I'm not a guy who was taught how to forge by a person who, you know, teaches people how to forge knives. All of my forging was purely just me practicing and figuring stuff out and the way metal moves. So some of my techniques might not be the correct way that a person would teach somebody, but that is the way that I've taught myself because I figured out that's what works for what I have and what I do. So I'll go through that process when we're actually doing the, the voiceover and all that so that hopefully it'll make a little bit of sense for things that I choose to do in the process. But let's go ahead, let's get out there, let's light the forge up, and let's start beating on some metal and turn this into a knife looking thing. Let's get it. So we want to go ahead and start cutting off these pieces that we're going to remove to make our lives a little bit easier during the forging process. I know a lot of people out there are thinking, where is his guard at? He needs to put his guard on his grinder. You're right. I don't even know where it's at anymore though. <laughs> so it is what it is. But once we get this cut out, we're going to go ahead, go into the shop, get it hot. We want to forge this hot, even though on certain parts, my lighting with my shop door being open and my camera tends to make it look like the steel is colder than it is. Right now, that is glowing orange to me. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's definitely hotter than what it actually looks like on the camera. And you want to forge 5160 hotter. You don't want to forge it cold because you'll be hammering forever and not really doing anything. Now, what we're focusing on now is just getting the handle kind of shaped roughly where we want it to be so that we can start focusing on the blade portion of this. And the big thing that you want to focus on whenever you're forging is if you're going to be manipulating the steel quite a bit, you need to go back and flatten it because everywhere where you're hitting is flaring out. And if you were to just forge this, the profile, and never flatten it, whenever you go back and flatten it, it's going to throw the profile completely back off again. So you just want to forge a little bit, flatten it. Forge a little bit, flatten it. And all we're doing is just at this point trying to get that handle like I said roughly where it needs to be so that we can then focus on the blade because we're going to come back and kind of mess with the handle a little bit later but we want to get the blade profiled and what I'm working on is just getting the belly kind of where it needs to be because I'm going to end up dropping that tip down but I wanted to get it to where the belly roughly was where I wanted it to be so that I knew how much I needed to drop the tip down. And that's what we're focusing on right now is getting that tip dropped down and flattening it again as we're going because this is going to create a little taco if you if you were to just do this much forging from top down it would curve the blade quite a bit so you want to make sure you're flattening it back out. So once we get it drop down to where we wanted it to, we start swooping it back up. Because if you remember on our profile, it has that swooping motion coming from the harpoon area, like what we're forging in right now, all the way through to the tip. And one of the things that I did here was I did move the harpoon area just a little bit further forward 
and I think it'll look better in the long run having it like this as opposed to being further back towards the handle but it was something that I started doing and I thought oh is this gonna look good but then I just you know committed to it so right now we're refining the handle just a little bit to make sure that we're not having to take off a ton of material I actually have the profile of the knife drawn on a piece of steel behind me so that I knew roughly where to get the dimensions to. That's why I'm modifying it a little bit right now and thinning the blade out because I I wanted to make sure that when I, this is all said and done I barely had to remove any material on the 2x72 so the whole point behind forging the profile is to get it as close to that profile as possible. And you're going to see later on that we're going to end up modifying the profile a little bit to fit this size because I did forge this about an inch longer than the actual profile. But we're going to go through, start refining the belly of this knife a little bit, put a little bit of that recurve in there, and thin out the area just in front of the handle, kind of towards where the ricasso is because it was pretty thick right there and I was going to have to remove a bunch of material so I wanted to pull that in just a little bit and now we're doing our hammered texture so this is just a ball peen putting all the little ball peen dots on there which looks really cool whenever you have this on the flats and you grind bevels up to it, it gives it really cool dimension to the way your blade looks now one of the things you have to think about as when you're using this ball peen hammer, it's moving the steel around everywhere. So you're gonna end up needing to come back and flatten it. And you wanna focus on both sides while you're doing this. So you're not thinning one area more than the other. But then once you get it to where you want it, you come back with light hammer blows and flatten the whole entire piece out in a way that it doesn't remove all these little hammer strikes you just put in here. Just like so. Then kind of put this in here. And what I'm going to end up doing is seeing where I need to shift things. I know for a fact that I still want the handle to be roughly profiled like this. So I'm going to go ahead and draw the handle in here and the choil area slash ricasso area okay So with this, I know that I need to kind of think about where I'm going to position things. So for right now, I'm just going to kind of go straight with this until I start really trying to finalize this profile. I know that I'm at least going to leave it right there. But that's a... Uh, Go ahead and profile this. I'm going to time lapse it so y'all aren't just sitting here listening to me, you know, jibber jabber the whole entire time. But we'll time lapse this and y'all get to see me go ahead and figure out how I'm going to do this profile. So as we start doing this profile, I know that I want to keep it, like I said, pretty similar to the original profile. But... I'm going to modify it a little bit just to make up for the size difference. And typically whenever I'm drawing these knives, I'll go through, I'll draw a little bit, erase, draw a little bit, see how it flows, see if I need to modify something a little bit. But what I really want to focus on and 
this particular voiceover is how I'm going to end up doing the guard area and it's really going to be something that is new for me. If you look above the drawing right now, you see that U shape? That is the shape of the guard, roughly. It's only going to go on either side of the tang and then wrap underneath the tang. There won't be any guard around the top of the tang. Because I plan on texturing the spine of this knife, I wanted that spine to flow all the way through the handle. So this is why I'm going to try this kind of wrap around guard thing that I've never tried before. And it's going to be interesting, but I think I'll be able to accomplish it. And what we're going to end up doing is just peening in the guard itself. So there's going to be either two brass pins or copper pins that keep that guard in place and I'll probably do a little bit of epoxy too just to make sure that everything stays exactly where it needs to be but it, it's going to be something that I've never tried before and I think that it'll be a cool process to to see how it works out but as we start getting into this one of the things that I did end up doing after this drawing was I did thin the blade out just a little bit I put a little bit more recurve into it than it currently has right now and I dropped the false edge down just a little bit to where it followed the blade a little bit better but what I'm going to end up doing is finishing the drawing here cutting it out modifying it just a hair and then I'm going to put it onto our steel profile and I'm going to spray paint around it so that I know where to actually grind to. There you go. <laughs> you can see right here, that is what we're grinding to. <laughs> the last time I did something like this, I ended up using my blue layout die, which actually didn't stand out very much. I would suggest that if you're gonna spray paint around your template, to use something like a white or black spray paint because it really stands out and contrasts of your forge skill that you have on the blade. So as you can see here, we really didn't need to grind hardly anything at all, which is the benefit of drawing out your profile to where you roughly want it to be, and then forging it out, and not being afraid to modify that profile to fit what you forged out. You know, you don't have to forge these things 100% profile especially for something like this where this isn't for a customer you know I, I could have easily used the profile that I had but I wanted to keep some of this extra length so that's the reason why I went this route and didn't modify it to make it smaller All right, guys, let's go ahead and wrap this Shop Talk Tuesday up with some of this. What do y'all think about that profile? What do y'all think about how big this thing is? That is absolutely massive. It's just under 15 inches overall length. It is an absolute beast. It's going to look really cool whenever we get our guard put on here. That's what this is marked for. The guard is going to come down right here, create the rest of this R choil right there that's gonna look really cool whenever that's on there we've got our hammer forged texture on both sides there so that's gonna look really cool on our flats and then of course our nice beefy handle and then super thick spine and everything this is gonna be a really beefy 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 knife I mean it is a heavy son of a gun but I cannot wait to finish this so I can start chopping with it because it's gonna be a blast what do y'all think about that so far Do y'all like the direction that it's going are y'all excited to see how I'm gonna do the guard have y'all seen people do guards that way I'm interested in those things and y'all let me know but guys in the next episode for this we need to go ahead 
and make sure this is perfectly true for our guard. We need to drill all of our holes for the pins. We need to go ahead, grind our bevels in, our false edge, and really make this thing go from a kind of a knife looking object to what really starts looking like a knife. So we've got a lot of work to do to get this thing to the next step. It's going to look absolutely awesome when we get to that point, though. I'm really excited about this, and hopefully y'all are too. Guys, if you are, let me know in the comment section. You know, like I said, do you think this is an awesome profile? Do you think I'm going in the right direction? You know, I'm interested in all those things. But guys, that is the end of this one. If y'all would, give this thing a thumbs up, share the video, subscribe to the channel. Guys, y'all have an amazing day. Y'all stay safe out there. I'll catch y'all next time. Boom. This is going to be awesome.